Welcome to another episode of Just Make Game. My name is Michael. I am making the game. The game is called Bannerman. This month we have a new level, a new boss, a new weapon, a new movement system and a whole bunch of other things to talk about so let's get right into it. We'll start with moving around. Uh, the main character from Bannerman can now move at a speed faster than his usual leisurely stroll. You can now run around and you have animations for doing so. Running has been implemented primarily to reduce some of the time spent backtracking. Speaking of backtracking, the shortcut system I mentioned last month has been extended and expanded. I'm a real big fan of discovery and letting the player find things within the game world on their own and that includes elements of mechanics and as such the shortcut mechanic is never explained in a traditional tutorial. There is no pop-up box that obscures the screen and goes this is a shortcut, this is how it works, these are all the mechanics surrounding it, do you understand, yes, no. So instead of directly explaining the shortcut mechanic to the player, I'm hoping instead to demonstrate it in action, which can uh, aid that little sense of discovery in the player. Uh, the shortcut in the first level is hard to miss, and if you die within that level, you might notice that the path stays open for you despite your death. After the first level though, you do have to go out of your way to um, unlock these shortcuts and progress through them and you have to deviate from the main path. It's a fine line trying to introduce systems to the player without revealing every aspect of it and having still something there to discover and just putting something in the game that no player will ever find so I'm still currently working on exactly how this is going to work. Now here is something exciting and new, a new weapon and the ability to carry and use more than one weapon at a time. The player can now pick up and make use of a bow as a secondary weapon. The bow has a limited number of arrows and therefore a limited number of attacks before it is depleted. Your longsword is still your primary weapon, uh, secondary weapons serve to supplement your existing attacks with others that are suited for different situations. But they're still all limited use weapons. A bow that runs out of arrows, for example, or a shield that breaks after blocking a certain number of attacks. Similar to enemy arrows, the bow deals normal damage to opponents, so it's rather inefficient to fire arrows at armoured enemies but it can be fantastic against lightly armoured opponents or finishing off tougher enemies once that armour is broken. The bow certainly is a lot of fun. Uh, it also adds a, another strategic layer to the combat in that you've now got a resource that you need to manage in addition to your health, armour and stamina. So there's a bit of risk reward in uh, using the bow. You can use it to easily take out an enemy now, but what if you need that arrow later? and you wasted it early, then you're stuffed. So um, yeah, it's quite a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to adding more weapons in the coming months as well. This month also saw completion of the bridge level. This level is what's well, nearly complete. It's missing a special effects layer that the other levels all currently have. So those are the things like uh, the smoke and embers in the village, the rain in the church level, uh, dust in the catacombs, and so on. Uh, that should be finished up very shortly. This level is the largest in the game so far, by quite a big margin actually, and it also marks the halfway point in the game. It is far less linear than uh, the previous levels building up to it, and it has a noticeable increase in difficulty as well. This is basically where Bannerman gets real. 
You've learnt the majority of the mechanics so far, and by this point, this is basically a test to make sure that you have properly understand how they all work and that you begin to master some of the more difficult mechanics like timed dodging and blocking when appropriate. If anyone is a Dark Souls fan, this is basically Bannerman's Anor Orlando in terms of its difficulty curve and the overall size of the level. The bridge level is uh, littered with shortcuts, side areas, items, notes, variants of prior enemies as well. For example, archers in this level can join in the fight from above, uh, firing arrows down on you while staying out of harm's way, essentially. The boss for this level is going to be a tough one and he should be ready to go next month. And speaking of bosses, the boss for the catacombs area is complete. Although their boss arena still needs some work, it's basically just a blank room at the moment. This boss is a magic user that is able to summon enemies to fight for them. They can fire projectiles, block incoming attacks, and also teleport. Uh, stamina management is the name of the game for this fight, and it is very possible to get completely overwhelmed and out of stamina, and blocked into a corner. And well, I guess that's, uh, that's probably the majority of the big milestones that have been hit this month. There are a few other things that are being completed as well, but they're either plot related or otherwise little surprises that I don't want to spoil in these videos before Bannerman is released. So as you can see, it was a pretty big month. Um, I'm powering through everything right now. Uh, I'm going to get back to it and uh, I will see you guys next month for another episode of Just Make Game. Thank you to everyone for watching. It's only just started. Yeah, fucking relax, mate. I've heard literally four notes. Fuck off. <laughs>